It was always so much fun to see them run out on the floor when they were warming up. Because <laughs> you knew that it was going to be, whatever happened that night was going to be good. Welcome to Anaconda, Montana. This one-time mining town was the home of a young man who had the world in his grasp. A basketball player of boundless talent. His name was Wayne Estes. Tell me about the hook shot. Wayne could do a hook shot in, differently than most people, right? Right or left? <laughs> you do it from the right? <laughs> From the left. <laughs> Wayne Estes was an all-American kid, already famous for his skills on the hard court. During his last game, on the last day of his life, Wayne Estes scored 48 points, and with his final basket, Wayne eclipsed the 2,000-point mark for his career. You spoke to him on the last night of his career. Um, you did a post-game interview with him. What, what do you remember about that? I remember that uh, Wayne had said that he was feeling numbness in his hands and he couldn't explain it. But I says, well, if, if you have numbness in your hands, Wayne, I says, I hope that you're numb an awful lot because <laughs> I says, you had a great game tonight. <laughs> I think on the basketball court there are many athletes that are good basketball players but the ones that are excellent and great basketball players are the ones that truly can read the next move and Wayne could read the next move. On the evening of February 8, 1965, on what was the biggest night of his athletic career, Estes and some friends stopped at the scene of a car wreck. Wayne walked into a downed power line and was killed instantly. Judy Martz was a close friend of Wayne's. An Olympic speed skater, she went on to become the governor of Montana in the years after his death. For the camera, tell me the story again about picking Wayne up at the airport uh, oh Christmas. He'd come back from a tournament in Hawaii, and uh, he met Bob Cousy, of course, at that tournament. And Bob Cousy told him he just had great hands, and he loved that he could make every shot from every place. And I said, well, that's just great, Wayne, but who is Bob Cousy? <laughs> And so, he laughed. This, right down in the trees, is a creek bed that he used to play in and they used to fish in. If Wayne ever had some tears, he probably had them by this creek too. You know, if he ever had heartache, it was probably by this creek, because it's a, one of those kinds of places that calls you. After Wayne's death, Judy March spent some time with his parents both of whom have since passed on. But the memories of their fallen son remain. I love this picture too. Hmm. I just love it. For a guy from a tiny, tiny town like this, to make such an impact on so many lives. And still, this many years later, making an impact. This breaks my heart. You know, because it, it was a waste. But, you know, just like you're glad you got to do this story, mm -hmm. I'm glad I knew him. <laughs> 